Hello, it's Jimmy here, the Riley. So I have here another Ford Transit Custom. So I did already make a start on it, but I thought I'll uh, just make a video because customers sort of been through the same sort of process uh, that I usually see. Um, the only reason really people come down to me is because the same things happen. They've been messed around with other other companies. So we'll get inside and we'll talk about what's going on. Okay, so we have engine malfunction, engine lights on. We've got a minus one degree reading there now, but we did have a minus 39 just a minute ago what I've done is I've unplugged the ambient temperature sensor plugged it back in to see if it does anything it's obviously done something there because we are close enough there at minus one at the minute we're probably around two or three degrees um, we'll get some fault codes up here that we have okay so the faults that we have here are glow plug cylinder one which we're not going to worry about today these vans are they can drive fine with the single glow plug out ambient air temperature sensor can be causing some issues it's going to be over fueling um, and it might possibly uh, inhibit the regen or stop the regen from taking place exhaust temperature too low for the particle filter regeneration is going to be the common issue with the vaporizer and then we have a forced limited power and a block dpf so let's go in to this module here and then we'll go to some live data or data stream as it's called here We'll look for we'll look for soot. I'm not sure where we have two, but we'll click the bolt. Go back. So we've got a DPF at two hundred and one percent, and we have pressure of 40 millibars of pressure so this has been to his normal regular mechanic who has tried to sort it out on various occasions right so the the, what the reason I'm making the video is because the usual story that I keep seeing and I thought we got rid of this problem but it's, it's still clearly evident because I've got another BMW here giving me the same um, same story basically you've been to a mechanic they've changed this they've changed that uh, they've called a DPF specialist's mobile cleaner out, which is the most annoying part for me because people advertise as a DPF specialist cleaning company. They come out, stick some fluid in, say goodbye. The customer drives 10 miles down the road, the light comes back on, then they say it's not their problem. Um, so they're, they're not fixing the cause behind it, they're just coming out and sticking some fluid in and see you later, basically. The whole reason of me making the videos is to educate people on not just doing the DPF clean, that's the easy part, it's figuring out why the problem's here and f fixing the cause before you've given a solution that would clean that. And you see this here is the exhaust temperature sensor after the DPF, or at the DPF, sorry. But we've got 190 degrees, which is around about operating temperature, but that should reach 600 degrees. And it won't reach 600 degrees if the vaporizer is blocked. It would reach maybe 350, something like that. So we've got these parts here delivered. This is the ambient temperature sensor. We've got Bennett there dropping one off for me. Now I know I've spoke about these ambient temperature sensors on Euro 6 vehicles. Um, so what I'm going to do here on this one is a little bit of a test. I'm not going to fit that sensor. I'm going to do the vaporizer. We're going to clean the DPF. I'm going to take it on a drive. I'm going to see is the van does the van activate its own region without a working um, ambient temperature sensor. Okay, so we have the usual vaporizer just up there so it's a little bit blurred but there it is this one's got AC which makes it a bit more difficult to get your hand in there so we're gonna get that out it's, it's a far reach up but we can just about do it usually okay so we've got the old vaporizer out and if we look at this gauge you can see the gauge builds pressure and that is the issue there that is blocked up with soot. Okay, on this, this is what we're going to do here. We're going to heat this up. So the reason we're doing this is the customer wants to save some money. He doesn't want to. He wants to try and save on replacing the part. So if we can refurb it and get it to work, uh, he's happy enough with doing that. So we're going to try that. We've still got pressure there. So we're going to give it a few more minutes. 
So we're just going to get that glow and red. Nice bright glow on it. Okay. So now we have no more movement. No pressure. It's nice and clear. Okay, so we've refitted the vaporizer. I'm gonna go into the special functions on this uh, and see if we can find fuel vaporizer prime. I'm gonna press that. Not only will that test that the vaporizer pump is working, but it's gonna prime the system up for us. It's not 100% necessary, but we're just gonna do it. Now to be able to reset the fault codes we're going to have to reset the particle filter values because it's locked in at 200% and that's not going to reset. So we're just going to reset that before we do a clean. This is just, I don't normally do it this way, we do the clean first. But we just want to do this as a, an experiment to make sure that the, is the ambient temperature sensor causing any issues. Now that that's reset we should be able to clear the fault codes. We should still probably have one for the ambient air temperature sensor. Oh, we've got the ignition off. So let's go back. Okay, ambient air temperature sensor, circuit high. So what I've done is I've just unplugged it so it's not showing anything at the minute. Now we're just going to look at the live data and see how the DPF is behaving with that unplugged. Go to the DPF data stream. It's going to be hard to see if this will work or not because we might just go straight back in limp mode without doing the DPF clean, but uh, looking for DIFF and then temperature. We need to keep an eye on this temperature because if it raises above 650 degrees we'd have to cut the engine off. Okay. okay, so I'll set these readings to something I'm more familiar with and we will take it for a little drive. You can see it's come down a little bit by spraying the vaporizer there and holding the revs up. Okay, so I've done sort of five or six miles. It hasn't tried to trigger its own regen just yet, which is surprising really. Um, and neither has it gone back into limp mode just yet, but if we take it on the motorway, it, it will either do one or the other. It will try and do a regen or go into limp mode at the same time. So we're just going to continue, put the sensor back on for the, going to put a new sensor on for the ambient air, clean the DPF, so we're down around sort of below 8 millibars of pressure. Okay, we've now got the fluid connected up to the compressor. That's coming under the van here, and that's connected directly to the DPF itself right here. Disconnected the DPF pressure sensor holes. And now we're just going to spray in our fluid. These DPFs sit nice and low so we can fill this completely with the fluid down here. But one litre of launch DPF cleaning fluid. <laughs> Noisy that one. Okay, ignition's been off too long now, we've lost connection so we'll just get this re restarted up. I'll put the link for this tool in the video. I think our model is 689BT. Probably one of the cheapest tools you've seen around really, less than 500 quid and it's got free updates for life. I've got a 10% discount code for this tool, put in the video dis uh, description. So now we've got the engine started up, we're going to see a lot of white vapour coming out. let that idle for a minute and I'll talk about something so I get a lot of people comment when they see this smoke saying so what is the point of, of having a DPF if when you put when you put a cleaner in it kicks all this shit back out out the tailpipe all of your emissions that's not that's not combustion smoke all that is is vapor from a hot exhaust and wet fluid in there and um, the fluid is, is just 
a detergent basically and you're gonna get this smoke like this and this, these type of cleans I didn't realize this for, for a few years until until after I was doing this but these type of cleans it doesn't actually kick any of the soot out of the exhaust it breaks it down and it, it will move it down to the bottom of the DPF that soot will never leave the DPF so a non-car clean will just get your cut your your DPF pressure down but it still keeps the soot in there but breaks it down so it's not causing a blockage basically um, the only way to get rid of ash buildup is to remove the DPF and reverse flush it um, in most cases that's it's too labor intensive um, and that's only in the cases where you have ash buildup this these type of cleans here is perfect for what I'm doing right right now Okay, now we're just going to hold the revs up. You can see we're back at minus 22 degrees here with the sensor. So Bennett's have given me the wrong sensor, so we've had to refit his old sensor back on, um, which is going to give us an idea again anyway, like I said before. We're going to take it on another drive now. We'll watch the live data again. Okay, so we'll have a look at the readings before we take off now. We're on sort of 8 millibars of pressure, 60 degrees on the DPF. 605 degrees, it's doing a regeneration. Okay, test ride's finished. Uh, this one is slowly coming back to normal. I think unplugging that and then plugging it back in is sort of maybe reset it. So after sort of half an hour, these usually do come back to where they should be, but I'd still recommend changing that. And we have confirmed that the vehicle was able to do its own regeneration process. Um, even though that sensor is reading out. I don't know if it, if we unplug it completely would it still do it, I'm not sure. These vans do take sort of a half an hour driving to get it to, to do its own regeneration process. So we're currently now on four millibars of pressure. These percentages will just come back to normal during its normal drive now. Okay, so that's it. We're just left with the glow plug cylinder one. That would need doing sometime in the future. It's not important right now, but whenever it, that can be done whenever whenever you're ready. Okay, so that's it. That's another transit. So not only is it have we just cleaned the DPF, we've successfully confirmed why it's happening. We've successfully fixed why it's happening, and we've also done a little bit of little small bit of research there regarding the ambient temperature sensor. If this band is Euro six, there's no question about it. The, the ambient temperature sensor will affect the DPF, but because this is Euro five, done a little bit of little bit of experiment in there. Um, even though it's reading minus 22 degrees, it still did do its own region. Um, whether or not it would do it when it's unplugged, I think it will, still will. The only thing I've ever seen affect the DPF on these Trantic Customs is the vaporizer. I've never really seen anything else cause cause an issue. Um, one other thing that can happen with these Trantic Customs is after you've got the DPF working, if the DPF hasn't been working for some months, if it's only been not working for a few days, it's usually fine, but if, if you've been driving around with a, a DPF issue on a Ford Transit for one month, two months, or three months, usually when you get the DPF back working, everything sort of comes back to life and then your EGR valve will try and reactivate and then suddenly you'll realize your EGR is now stuck so that is a very common issue I see people also ask me um, you know where did I learn all of this stuff and how did I, where did I get all the knowledge from this is how I've got my knowledge exactly like you're seeing today I've just taken extra steps to see why this is happening to take it on, on a test drive while the fault's present while the fault's not present looking at the live data and seeing what's going on and then you quickly realize when you've done a few that's the reason why that was happening and that's the reason why that was happening it's all just down to experience and just whether or not you can be bothered to spend the extra time most people just want to get in do the dpf clean see you later i've got my money yeah you've, your dps blocked again because you've got other issues that's your problem you need to sort that out but the whole reason of me making these videos is to show people how to do the job properly and if you can't do it then you shouldn't really be doing dpf cleans that's how i see it anyway we're all done and i'll see you on our next video Again.